Hey everyone, my name is Luke. I'm a full-time pathologist assistant working here in Canada and today I want to talk to you guys about what it takes to get into a pathologist assistant program and what you can expect your training to look like. So there are several different training programs between the Canadian and the American schools. Largely I think they're fairly similar but there are some differences in terms of prerequisites and, and some other things like that so we'll take a quick look at that go over what that typically looks like and then we will jump into what your training program actually is going to involve and what you can expect from your probably 22 to 24 months in school. Let's get into it. Alright so first off actually getting into PA school. Uh, if you want to go this road and join this awesome career that is outstanding. I think that uh, I think this is a great place to be and a great place to work but I do want to just give you the quick disclaimer and heads up before you start applying to school. If you haven't thought about if you can deal with looking at blood, you know, feces, kind of gross body things on a semi-regular basis, this might not be for you. If you, you know, if you've never seen a dead body or if you don't think you could handle seeing uh, dead people, that is a very real, uh, you know, a very real concern for some people. You're not dealing with a lot of patients, so that also is something to think about if you're really hoping that you'll get to hang out with people, get to lead individual people personally through a healthcare journey. That's not something that you'll be doing here either. And then also there is, there's no research. This is largely a hands-on job. Uh, you're not sitting at a desk and working on a computer, really. You're working at a lab bench in a lab. It's, it's pretty active. There's a lot of moving, standing in a boat. Things can get kind of high paced from time to time. There are, you know, slow days, fast days. I'm sure it's like that in any job, but there's definitely that, that pressure element that exists here. And then also, this is a job that can take a bit of an emotional toll. Ultimately, I'd, I'd say the day-to-day -day practice is fairly clinical, and I, I, at least I personally don't think about each of the people that, you know, we're ultimately treating and helping by what we do at our job, but really ultimately at the end of the day everything that we deal with comes from an actual person and sometimes when you see either the some of the more you know traumatic amputations or cancers that people have been living with and get taken out you know there is a person at the other end of that so that that can take an emotional toll on you too so first of all something to be aware of but say you have made it past that you're okay you're still still fired up and ready to go um, what are some of the other things that you are going to be looking for when you're applying to one of these programs? So there are actually 12 NACLS accredited schools between Canada and the US and that is NAACLS. That is just an accrediting body that ensures that when you are done your training program you'll actually be able to write the board certification exam by the end of it. In Canada you require a NACLS accredited school to write the CCCPA exam and in the states you require a NACLS accredited school to write the ASCP exam. Now if you graduate from a Canadian school you'll also be eligible to write that ASCP exam provided your school was, uh, was NACLS accredited. Some other things that you will want to look for in terms of applying is what the prerequisites for the school actually are. So by and large, these are pretty similar. Uh, you need to have some kind of anatomy, physiology, or, or science background, <clears throat> but the, this can actually vary a fair bit between schools. Some programs only are looking for a straight GPA minimum, so they might want a 3.3 GPA, for example, which rounds out to about a B plus average. I believe that's also high 70s, but you could easily look that up online. Uh, some of them want that, a couple of references, and, and then you're off to the races, whereas other schools, in addition to maybe a GPA requirement and some references, they actually mandate that you are required to have shadowing experience and that you are also required to submit a GRE or an MCAT score to the program before you get in. Now, that's, that's not something that exists for every school, but if that's, for example, something that you have not completed or you feel like you, you can't do, um, something else to be definitely aware of. The, you know, the likelihood of you getting into a school is, you know, it's a pretty competitive program and a pretty competitive job field. There's not that many of us out there. So I, I would definitely recommend that you don't just put all your eggs in one basket, apply to a couple of schools at least. I know not everyone loves to get out of their comfort zone and, and move away from home, but based on the number of job opportunities that are out there and the other school locations that 
um, that exists, you're going to end up traveling once you get into your program for rotations later, which we'll speak about. So don't let that stop you from you know pursuing this pursuing this career path and ultimately an amazing career. Some of the other things to consider when you are applying is the tuition cost. So if you are an international student, first of all, you'll be paying a higher tuition, but I've seen tuition ranging from the mid 20,000s all the way up to close to 100,000, uh, depending on where you are. I believe the Canadian schools are a lot cheaper. And even if you're an international student coming to Canada, I think you will still end up paying less than you will for some of the American schools. So something to be aware of. Something else to consider for the program, which I don't know if any of everybody thinks about, but if you can talk to someone from the program itself, whether that's the you know program director, uh, previous or current students, or at least someone involved in the program, I think that helps your eventual application a lot too. It not only allows you to answer some questions basically right from the horse's mouth, since that's the person or people that will be, or who have been in your shoes before, but these people often can have some first of all insights in the program and if you're talking to someone that's on the teaching side or the administration or admission side of things oftentimes these are people that will be involved in your admissions process so if you have talked to them and they can put a face to your name and you're not just another um, another paper or computer application that that's going to carry a lot of weight um, showing is always better than telling and if you can you've already shown those people that you are interested in the program, you're asking intelligent questions, you're, you're kind of pursuing that path, I think that will lend a lot to your application as opposed to just saying that you're very interested in the program, you're a hard worker, all of those standard kind of things. So uh, definitely, definitely contact someone within the program. I would you know, obviously love if you could sit down with them, but even a FaceTime call or a phone call, and, uh, and then you can go from there. So my personal recommendations slash what I did when I got myself into PA school is I had come from a background of a science-based undergrad, so I graduated with a kinesiology degree. From there, I worked in the healthcare field. I worked in EMS for about two years following that, and then I applied to the program. But when I applied, I, I did what I was just talking about. I contacted one of the people involved in instructing in the program. I spoke with him at least twice on two different occasions. I was able to meet with him in person. I realized not necessarily a reality in the COVID world that we have now, but even a face-to-face -face conversation to ask him some questions about what the career looked like, what the school process would look like, the, um, you know, the overall picture of what a successful applicant even looks like. Uh, I got literally all of that straight from him. And then by the time it came to fill out my application, I could, you know, bring some of those things right back that I had been told is exactly what they were looking for. Uh, they knew me because I had, I had spoken to them a few times. I was able to do a little bit of shadowing as well, so I brought that to the table. And all in all, that uh, those were things that made my application competitive enough to get an interview. And then from there, my interview got me a spot in school. All right, we are psyched about applying to a PA program. We think this is the job in the school for us and we can't wait to you know get going and get to the races. A uh, few things that you might not be aware of are what the program is actually going to look like from here. So the all the PA programs that are NACLA's accredited are they are master's programs. So you will graduate with a master's degree in pathologist assistance or pathology or a master of sciences with a specialization in pathology, something like that. And programs are all two year, typically 22 to 24 months of full-time school. And that's gonna be split up into a didactic or a, a classroom year and a, and a practical year. The first year of clinical classes are gonna be typically covering things like anatomy, surgical pathology, autopsy and pediatric pathology, medical terminology, embryology, ology, 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 um, microbiology, cellular pathology, and uh, and then you may also touch on some legal and accreditation requirements as well as lab management and, and safety stuff in there as well. The second year is going to be where all the where I think all the fun stuff happens. So that's when you actually get to go into the lab and start grossing and handling tissues and, and start working in the morgue and handling stuff for yourself. Uh, that is going to mainly be centered around rotations at 
multiple sites. Typically, hospitals or, or clinics that you'll be working at don't specialize in all of the specimen types, and that's usually because the pathology itself is specialized by pathologists, so there'll be a, like a breast pathologist and a GI or a GU pathologist, and the site that you go to may not have all of those, so you'll be probably moved around a little bit, and that's also just good work experience for you in the future. So things you're gonna be exposed to in that practical year are the gynae specimens, and those are typically lady bits, uh, breast pathology, GI, uh, GU, so genital urinary, so kidneys and, and bladder and prostate, uh, as well as a head and neck specimen, so anything from, from here up. Uh, endocrine, so that can be things like adrenals and, th and thyroids. You'll also touch on kind of bone and soft tissue, so if people get, if get cancers growing in their bones or arms or anything that's arriving from there as well. And you'll also touch a, a large part on autopsy. And that may look like rotations through a medical examiner's office, as well as hospital autopsy cases. And the difference there are medical cases where it's someone who's already sick and they know that they're dying versus maybe someone's found in their home and they've died for an unexplained reason. Uh, along with that, you'll probably do rotations at a children's or a pediatric hospital just to get some exposure to that end of the spectrum as well. And this practicum year is, is kind of like a work day. You're just going to show up at, at 8 or 9 in the morning. You're going to head into the lab and, you know, you're working there, grossing specimens under the guidance of someone, of course, uh, for a regular work day. And you're getting exposed to what the job's actually going to look like. Thrown into there, you'll be probably doing frozen sections and, uh, and, and handling fresh specimens as well if your lab's actually fixing cases before they gross them the following day. Now, I know I said this is not a, a research-based career, and the programs are all practical-based programs, so you're not writing a thesis to present or give at the end of, of the program, but some of the programs that I'm aware of have a research project or component built into them, as well as some presentations as well. So I know that when I went through my program, I had to present, uh, present at rounds one of the months uh, at our site, I also handled and, uh, or handled, I guess, was part of a research project that a pathologist was in charge of, and I ended up sort of handling that and presenting that at the end of the year. So while I didn't have a thesis, there was still a small chunk of, of a research component there. I don't believe that all the schools have this built into the system, though, and that may be something that pushes you towards one school versus, versus another. From there, after the about two years were up, I graduated from my program and was able to start job hunting from there. Now, graduating from a program isn't, isn't the end, as nice as that would be. So graduating just means you are, obviously you've gotten your master's degree, but you still have to get board certified. Now, depending on where you go to look for a job or find a job, your employer may require certification, your state or country may require certification. That is that is more dependent on where you're actually from, but you typically have somewhere between three to five years to actually get that certification from an exam standpoint. So meaning if you graduated in 2020, you might have until 2025 in which you'll be eligible to write the exam. I personally wouldn't wait that long. I would like to get it over as soon as possible. And your employer may only give you six or 12 months to actually get certification before you're allowed to start working in your job. Uh, from there, I I feel like I, I hit the ground running. I managed to graduate my program uh, coming into the summer, and I wrote my first certification exam, so the Canadian certification exam, after about two or three months, and my American one within the next, I think, year and a half. And I have now both certifications, and I'm eligible to work pretty much anywhere in North America in what is a pretty amazing job. So hopefully that gave you a good idea about what applying to a pathologist's assistant program looks like and what the training process is actually gonna entail. If you have any other questions about applying to schools or about what your training program would look like once you're in, please leave a comment down below and I would love to get back to you. Thanks everyone, I'll see you next time.